I don't think the munchkins are prepared for what's coming tonight. In chapter 13 of Ozma of Oz, we're on Facebook Live! Yes, this is chapter 13 of Ozma of Oz. It's entitled, The Gnome King Laughs. There's only like 21 chapters in this book, so we're like well over halfway through it. We're like two-thirds of the way through it tomorrow night. Wow! And then we only got like one more week to read it, and then we'll be on book four, which is called... Dorothy and the Wizard in Oz. Because it's like 14 of these books. All right. Chapter. I, by the way, I have two munchkins here tonight. Well, there's one. Here comes the other. He's he's slowly meandering in the frame. There he is. All right. Sit. Let's read. Chapter 13, The Gnome King Laughs. In a moment, the king returned to his throne and relighted his pipe, and the rest of the little band of adventurers settled themselves for another long wait. They were greatly disheartened by the failure of their girl ruler, and the knowledge that she was now an ornament in the Gnome King's palace, a dreadful, creepy place in spite of all its magnificence. Without their little leader, they did not know what to do next, and each one, down to the trembling private of the army, began to fear he would soon be more ornamental than useful. Suddenly, the Gnome King began laughing. <laughs> well, what's happened? asked the Scarecrow. Why, your friend, the Tin Woodman. He's become the funniest thing you can imagine, replied the King, wiping the tears of merriment from his eyes. No one would ever believe he could make such an amusing ornament. Next! They gazed at each other with sinking hearts. One of the generals began to weep dolefully. "'What are you crying for?' asked the Scarecrow, indignant at such a display of weakness. "'He owed me six weeks of back pay,' said the general, "'and I hate to lose him.' "'Well, then you shall go and find him,' declared the Scarecrow. "'Me?' cried the general, greatly, dis greatly alarmed. "'Certainly it is your duty to follow your commander. March!' I won't, said the general. I'd like to, of course, but I just simply won't. The scarecrow looked inquiringly at the Gnome King. Never mind, said the jolly monarch. If he doesn't care to enter the palace and make his guesses, I'll throw him into one of my fiery furnaces. I'll go, of course I'm going, yelled the general as quick as scat. Where's the entrance? Where is it? Let me, get, let me go at once. So the Gnome King escorted him into the palace and again returned to await the result. What the general did, no one can tell, but it was not long before the king called for the next victim, and a colonel was forced to try his fortune. Then, one after another, all of the twenty-six officers filed into the palace and made their guesses, and became ornaments. Meantime, the king ordered refreshments to be served to those waiting, and at his command a rudely shaped gnome entered, bearing a tray. This gnome was not unlike the others that Dorothy had seen, but he wore a heavy gold chain around his neck, to show that he was the chief steward of the Gnome King, and he assumed an air of much importance, even told even and even told his majesty not to eat too much cake late at night, or he would be ill. Dorothy, however, was hungry, and she was not afraid of being ill, so she ate several cakes and found them good, and also she drank a cup of excellent coffee made of a richly flavored clay, browned in the furnaces, then ground fine, and found it most refreshing and not at all muddy. Of all the party which had started upon this adventure, the little Kansas girl was now left alone with the Scarecrow, TikTok, and the Private for counselors and companions. Of course, the Cowardly Lion and the Hungry Tiger were still there, but they, having also eaten some of the cakes, had gone to sleep at one side of the cave, while the other side stood the Sawhorse, motionless and silent, as became a mere thing of wood. Belina had quietly walked around and picked up the crumbs of cake which had been scattered, and now... As it was long after bedtime, she tried to find some dark place in which to go to sleep. Presently, the hen spied a hollow underneath the king's rocky throne and crept into it unnoticed. She could still hear the chattering of those around her, but it was almost dark underneath the throne, so that soon she had fallen fast asleep. Next, called the king, and the private, whose turn it was to enter the fatal palace, shook hands with Dorothy and the scarecrow and bade them a sorrowful goodbye, and passed through the rocky portal. They waited for a long time, for the private was in no hurry to become an ornament, and made his guesses very slowly. 
The Gnome King, who seemed to know by some magical power all that took place in his beautiful rooms of his palace, grew impatient finally and declared he would sit up no longer. I love ornaments, said he, but I can wait until tomorrow to get more of them. So as soon as that stupid private is transformed, we will all go to bed and leave the job to be finished in the morning. Is it so very late? asked Dorothy. Why, it's after midnight, said the king, and that strikes me as being late enough. There is neither night nor day in my kingdom, because it is under the earth's surface, where the sun does not shine. But we have to sleep just the same as the upstairs people do, and for my part, I'm going to bed in a few minutes. Indeed, it was not long after this that the private made his last guess. Of course, he guessed wrongly, and of course, he at once became an ornament. So the king was greatly pleased and clapped his hands to summon the chief steward. Show these guests to some of the sleeping apartments, he commanded. Be quick about it, too. I'm dreadfully sleepy myself. You have no business to sit up so late, replied the steward gruffly. Be as cross as a griffin tomorrow morning. His majesty made no answer to this remark, and the chief steward led Dorothy through another doorway into a long hall from which several plain but comfortable sleeping rooms opened. The little girl was given the first room, and the scarecrow and Tick-Tock the next, although they never slept, and the scarecrow, or the lion and the tiger the third. The sawhorse hobbled after the steward into the fourth room, to stand stiffly in the center of it until morning. Each knight was rather aboard of the sawhorse, scarecrow, and Tick-Tock, but they had learned from experience to pass the time patiently and quietly, since all their friends who were made of flesh had to sleep and did not like to be disturbed. When the chief steward had left them alone, the scarecrow remarked sadly, I am in great sorrow over the loss of my old comrade, the Tin Woodman. We've had many dangerous adventures together and escaped them all, and now it grieves me to know he has become an ornament and is lost to me forever. He was always an ornament to society, said Tick-Tock. True, but now the Gnome King laughs at him and calls him the funniest ornament in all the palace. It'll hurt my poor friend's pride to be laughed at continued the Scarecrow, sadly. We will make rather absurd ornaments ourselves tomorrow, observed the machine in his monotonous voice. Just then Dorothy ran into their room in a state of great anxiety, crying, Where's Belina? Have you seen Belina? Is she here? No, answered the Scarecrow. Then what has become of her? Why, I thought she was with you, said the Scarecrow. Yet I do not remember seeing the yellow hen since she picked up the crumbs of cake. We must have left her in the room where the king's throne is, decided Dorothy. And at once she turned and ran down the hall to the door through which they had entered. But it was fast closed and locked on the other side, and the heavy slab of rock proved to be so thick that no sound could pass through it. So Dorothy was forced to return to her chamber. The cowardly lion stuck his head into her room to try and console the little girl for the loss of her feathered friend. The yellow hen is well able to take care of herself, said he, so don't worry about her, but try to get all the sweep you can. It's been a long and weary day, and you need rest. I'll probably get lots of rest tomorrow when I become an ornament, said Dorothy sleepily. But she lay down upon her couch nevertheless, and in spite of all her worries, was soon in the land of dreams. And thus ends chapter 13, The Gnome King Laughs. Tomorrow's chapter... Is chapter 14 that's titled Dorothy Tries to Be Brave. And if you want to hear Dorothy Tries to Be Brave, all you got to do is join us tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, Facebook Live. Osmo Vaz.